Okay, so the last talk in this session on infrastructure uh, will be by Kevin Williams, and it's uh, you know, World Technology Roadmap Forum from 2017. So uh, Kevin leads the Photonic Integration Research Group at the Institute of Photonic Integration, which was formerly known as COBRA uh, Research Institute in Eindhoven, and, um, and he performs research into large-scale high-performance photonic integrated circuits with a particular focus now on indium phosphide photonic integrated circuit technology. So, Kevin, thank you. Does this work better? I'm, I'm, I'm not wired, no, but maybe this one works. Is this? This is good. Okay, well, thank you very much for this opportunity to, uh, to brief you on what we were doing earlier this year, uh, Jan uh, July in the Bosch as part of a joint road mapping uh, technology forum. Also been briefed to uh, share with you some thoughts on what we're doing in Europe that may be a little different to what's going on here. So, so I'll uh, highlight some of those aspects as well. So an outline to the presentation. I'll first tell you a little bit about what we've been doing in the Bosch. Uh, talk through some of the new next steps that we'll be making. Uh, show how this links into some of the European activities in photonics, uh, the road mapping, in terms of the pilot lines. Uh, Peter has already told you a little about one such pilot line, but there are others, so I'll give you an idea of thinking behind that, how that may lead on to what the uh, European Commission is branding as innovation hubs. The activities that we're looking into for stimulating new markets and yeah, how we want to try it and align new market developments for uh, to technology development. So I think this is very much at the heart of what the road mapping ambition is. Finally give you a little plug for the road mapping activity next year. So the World Technology Mapping Forum was co-organized uh, by Photon Delta. I'll tell you a little bit more about Photon Delta as we go through this presentation. I'm representing them in this presentation. And also AIM Photonics. What we sought to do at this meeting was bring some global representation to the road mapping discussions. We had approximately 150 delegates uh, from Europe, from the US, from Asia, industry, academia. We're really trying to engage with technology developers as well as PIC innovators, people that were likely who are trying to integrate PICs within their new uh, PIC-based PIC products. And as we've heard already this morning, this goes far beyond what we've seen already in terms of telecom type applications. It was a three day summit in Den Bosch. This is the regional capital for North Brabant in the Netherlands. Uh, Eindhoven, where my own university is based, is in, is in North Brabant. And we have a lot of support from our region for uh, exploiting, developing photonic IC technology. So we're very keen to host this activity. We had a number of plenaries um, to give you a couple of uh, images to give you an idea of who might have, who was there. Uh, the, the, the ambition was to accelerate photonic technology, of course. Uh, we had Professor Lyle Kimmeling, of course, with us. Professor Tom Bax, who leads the Photonic uh, Photon Delta Initiative. And we also had engagement for, from local politicians and the European Commission. And the presentation from Michael Levy on a review of market studies, which is very, very important as well, very influential. Much the same way as you're seeing in your own activities, and this was inspired beca uh, because of the collaboration with, with AIM Photonics, we broke out into technical working groups. We identified some challenges that are interesting from a European perspective as well. So um, I haven't heard so much this morning about Indian phosphide. That's quite a strong activity in Europe, and also there's a lot of work in, in Japan. So is that something we wanted to bring to the discussions? Uh, of course, the silicon photonics activity in Europe as well, and silicon nitride. So identifying what, what is the challenge across these platforms and how to you know, generate a roadmap going forward. Looking at similarities, differences, dueling, uh, specifications, and the like. Many of the things that you'll be looking at here, but of course, with a different group of stakeholders. The technical working groups uh, came back and shared their thoughts. Uh, we had a number of uh, working groups that we focused on in this particular meeting. Uh, we addressed packaging, assembly, testing metrics, 
through to electronic, photonic design automation, substrates, and uh, particularly platform technologies was, uh, and, and equipment was quite an active area of discussion. And panel discussions as well. So the idea here, of course, being to highlight open issues, cross-cutting considerations, and how to organize going forwards. So for the next steps, we've, uh, we're working with um, an organization called Berenskos, whose logo does appear from time to time. Apologies for the inconsistencies. Uh, planning some road mapping now. Uh, one of the, the big challenges, of course, is to work out how to synchronize effectively and contribute effectively uh, with, with AIM as well. Uh, this, this gives you an idea of the perspective that's being developed, uh, particularly looking at things like ecosystems around the world, a global perspective looking at where the strengths are, markets, applications, devices, technologies. So this is all being crystallized from the, the meetings that we had in July. Um, there's an ambition to cover quite a broad scope. Uh, I've highlighted with the, the stars where we've really put some attention so far. And this is partly because of the particular interest from the community that gathered in the Bosch. Um, but it also gives an idea of areas that more one might want to look at later on as well. So it's the, the orange stars there I highlighted earlier, really the technical topics, um, and uh, also looking at some of the, uh, the market areas. The big challenge, I think, going forward is really going to be matching these, these two together. The ecosystems, well, clearly there is a major strength in, in the US. Uh, reflected by this meeting. There is also, of course, some activity in Europe, which I'll give you a, a flavor of over the next few slides, and, of course, Asia. So we did ask a number of people to join us for that meeting, and, uh, and again, we will do so in, in 2018. What we're trying to get with the ecosystems activity is to capture, really, what's happening where, where the strengths are, where the opportunities are. There appear to be quite a lot of synergies to be had. Um, and really trying to crystallize this so that we can all benefit from this knowledge uh, is, is the focus in this chapter. In the markets chapter, this is really addressing how to pull, uh, align market pull with technology push. And what we're seeing at the moment is very different requirements from different application spaces. And all tend to be very challenging, but all different reasons. So really trying to crystallize those challenges and map them on to what technology platforms are realistically able to do. And it's not a static map. This is something that evolves over time. So something that was very much on the minds of the working groups was how do we schedule you know, performance of uh, the evolution over time? What sort of integration technologies come into play for which application spaces? I won't go through the details because I think you're quite familiar with a lot of these challenges already. In terms of platform integration, well, there's, there's a number of flavors around the world, and many of you will be very familiar with them. What we haven't managed to do yet, I feel, is uh, really try to map out over time how these new strategies will impact the different market sectors. So really looking at where, where is discrete suitable now, and that is in many spaces, so a huge uh, application range for discrete assembled devices. But the logic, of course, is that these will evolve into ever-increased integration complexity. So how you combine those technologies is, is a real challenge, understanding when it becomes cost-effective or realistic to do so. And this, to some extent, tells us the same thing. It's really mapping out how how we integrate at the chip level, where does it make sense to go hybrid, heterogeneous. This will not always be the same story for different market sectors. So you might imagine a number of high performance sensing devices will not require heterogeneous integration, though they would benefit from it if it becomes a main, mainstream technology. But data center might drive that sort of integration. Quite a lot of discussion in the space of testing as well. Uh, here, is, of course, you'll be very much aware that testing and certainly packaging can, uh, can cost, account for quite a considerable part of the device. Uh, so, so really thinking through methods to address testing 
uh, went to the heart of some of these work group discussions. And it's not just about, is my product good enough, of course. We heard earlier on today about how you really want to centre your processes. So right down at the test-orientated design, we need much richer content for our PDKs. We need to be validating wafers for release. And then we need to go all the way through to understanding how does a customer from a particular market segment decide that this is qualified. And this is a challenge when you look at generic processes where you want to leverage a common process across many platforms. And how do you qualify when you've got very different market requirements? So, so that's, that's a challenge that uh, is, is being addressed certainly from the European side because there's a particular interest in open access and in terms of generic processes that reduce barrier to entry. Uh, this is a theme that I think will come up quite a lot as I move into the next phase of the, uh, the slides um, because it's very much at the, at the heart of the European thinking at the moment is how do you enable the new innovators, uh, the new breakthrough technologies. One part of this is aligning expectations. People from other sectors want to know how is your technology going to evolve. Most common questions, of course, are going to be things like cost and volume, but that's not really enough. They need to know how performance is likely to evolve, um, how, how methods, uh, how value chains can evolve. A number of road mapping activities have been initi initiated, largely for different stakeholder groups. One challenge I think we're all going to face really moving forward is how to crystallise these roadmaps so that they really speak to the right, right groups and enable what we're trying to achieve here, which is really a common vision for the industry so that we can all engage, so that technology developers can really push forward on the technology and be reasonably confident that the market's going to be appearing at the right time, at the right volume. Access to the technology is now key. Uh, if you want to enable some of these new healthcare ideas that Peter was mentioning earlier. Uh, historically, the PIC technology has been uh, really driven by the telecom community. We hear that it's set to revolutionize datacom. But I think we need to look further, and we've heard that already. Um, the big breakthroughs could well be beyond communications. And here, there are actually quite considerable barriers. There's a lot of the businesses that are ready to take advantage of these technologies are not familiar enough with them. Uh, they're not able to work with them. There's a lot of reasons for that. It's perceived cost. It's uh, non-existent value chains. It's not having first-time right design. A whole range of things. Lack of access to scalable production facilities. Might not be such a problem for silicon, but it could be for other flavors or combinations of photonic technologies. And this is really what's motivated the European Commission in, in the latest rounds of funding to really look at pilot line initiatives. This is to create methods for new entrants to really test out and scale up. So learn how to produce, build up the confidence that they know how to produce in volume. And there's been quite a few initiatives that have started already. Uh, this gives you, I, I believe these are the photonics ones, uh, we have PIX for Life, which is an initiative centred around silicon nitride technologies. Uh, company Lionix, as well as IMEC, uh, are pro providing the foundry facilities for this. And this is geared primarily towards health and food uh, technologies. OLED technologies, uh, mid-infrared sensing. I'll touch on these with a, a one-pager shortly. PIX have we've heard about. Uh, and also act fast, which is it's a nice way to get companies running quickly uh, on a new new concept. Give you an idea of what these, these pilot line initiatives are trying to do. Um, I think it's, it's probably worth prefacing this by saying that a number of people have different view of what pilot lines should be. Uh, in this case, I think really what the Commission is trying to do is generate new markets, accelerate new markets, provide access to the technology, fast access, and a way to scale. So it's quite ambitious. It's many, many things that go beyond just simply learning how to manufacture. It's enabling new products as well. 
And the range that you're seeing for Pixel Live is from multispectral imaging through to OCT technologies. Uh, the support that uh, customers are getting here is it's quite quite detailed, uh, in terms of, uh, all the way from system spec. Some of these businesses are not so confident in this space. Training them up and enabling them to do this, all the way through to assisting with with test. And similarly, OLEDs are uh, looking at access to roll-to-roll to -roll printing, thin film, flexible electronics. Mayfab, this is, this is more of a sort of one-stop shop concept where you know, companies are able to access the latest in quantum cascade lasers and subband lasers, combine them with SOI technology, SIGI technology, and build up systems uh, that way. And you can see that this becomes quite exciting. Sorry, did what I if you want to uh, arrange, uh, if you want to start probing uh, the spectral signatures of gases uh, in the micron range, one up to 1, uh, 11 microns. And you can see the impact across sectors could be quite significant, from industry through to, to transport. And finally, uh, we have uh, PIXAP. I won't dwell on this because I think Peter can express it far better than I. They're very important packaging these, these technologies and, and, and sharing uh, training uh, up to be able to do that. An innovation accelerator that's quite important in Europe, this has been running for probably about 10, 12 years now and it's been extended again for another four years, is a method of enabling new businesses that have very limited photonics experience to connect with experts from many different institutes throughout Europe provides the design access, provides the foundry access, doesn't provide subsidy, but it does provide you know, cost covered access. The companies do need to bring in quite a lot themselves, quite a lot of in-kind, if you like, personnel, uh, because you, you don't succeed on these projects unless you put a lot of effort in from within your organization. And this has led to approximately, I think it's about 80 or 90 uh, projects over the last three years. Uh, which have really enabled uh, these businesses to create prototypes and learn how to move to the next phase. Very much orientated towards the user need rather than the technology need. So you see they're covering technologies from free space optics through to MLMs. We also have our own, a little plug for ourselves in a sense, but we also have the Open Access access infrastructure in, in Europe as well. JEPIX, which we coordinate at Eindhoven, is specifically interested in providing access to indium phosphide based picks and silicon nitride based picks. Been running for about 10 years and over those 10 years I think there's been about four or five hundred unique designs uh, created for users. Our transition to a semi-commercial operation a couple of years ago. It's quite a powerful way of uh, making technology available. I think you're very familiar with this building block approach where users are able to place, using for example, Phoenix tools, to, to place components, amplifiers, lasers, uh, filters, according to their wishes within a circuit and have that produced. Uh, we still, of course, go through that phase of consolidating, maturing the, build, uh, the process design kits, but they are there, they're pretty robust. Um, you get the benefits of the cost-shared tools, you get the benefits of cost-shared infrastructure, and even the shared wafer. So a very effective way to bring down costs. We like to use the Lego analogy because we do think it is, it is tending to that direction at the moment. And here you see the MPW as a vehicle. Uh, this is for the Indian phosphide case, of course, where you can have multiple designs across, across the wafer. Uh, Quite a lot of the, the designs being prototyped at the moment come more from the sensing area than the communications area at this time. And you see uh, quite a range of prototypes across market se sectors. So it's been a success story so far in terms of enabling many people to try out new designs. I think the next phase is very much about enabling the supply chain. So businesses now need to work out how they do business with each other to create products. You know, do they bring these expertise in-house, get trained up through PixApp, for example, or do they work with design houses, we have a number of those developing in Europe, or, or 
uh, she was at other business arrangements. And th this is very much what's driving now the innovation hub concept in Europe. Uh, and another plug uh, where Photon Delta is really trying to establish as it is in fact an innovation hub now, a European innovation hub in the area of photonics. And here what we're trying to achieve is clustering know-how so that you can act as a sort of one-stop shop for photonic solutions. Road mapping continues to play a massive role in this. Um, as I say, it's, it's the alignment of expectations which, which will become very, very important as we engage new markets. So I'm going to wind up a little bit now. The World Technology Mapping Forum for 2018 has, uh, has been announced, it will be in Twente in Eindhoven. In Eindhoven we have uh, a number of universities, uh, sorry, in, in the Netherlands we have a number of universities engaged in photonics. Twente has a particular expertise in silicon nitride uh, and will be a, fa a fantastic choice for, for the event next year. So, so please do take the opportunity to come along if you can and the date is announced. Um, final picture, I think, a photograph from uh, earlier this year. Uh, with that, thank you very much. Questions for Kel? That's more broad. That's on photonics more broadly. So that will encap uh, encompass everything from the activity at SML on cell photography to lighting. It's quite broad. Is that one is not. <laughs> it's available. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Just a quick question. Uh, you ended with the discussion of uh, Eindhoven is a local innovation hub. Mm -hmm. And so the question comes to mind, uh, in electronics, the supply chain is distributed all over the world. Uh, is the idea of the local innovation hub an answer to the fact that to generate uh, the innovation, you need to have it more localized to get critical mass? Or no. no, sorry. I, I Confused a couple of ideas there, so I'm grateful that you uh, clarified that point. The innovation hubs are distributed. They will engage with partners across Europe. But they provide a focus. They provide a go-to place where people can recognize, yeah, I've got this problem, I can go. I, I can get that solved. And it may well be that some of the, and we see this a lot with our own JEPIX activities. We have people at Eindhoven working with JEPIX, reaching out to, to businesses, training. And we see quite often there are companies will come to us and say, look, I've got this problem, and we recognize pretty straight away that you know, we don't have a solution. We'll talk to partners. And we'll handle it. Our, our business there is very much about finding solutions, not finding business. Thanks a lot. So I have a question here that uh, regarding how American companies can get involved in uh, European initiative in addition to roadmap discussion. Are the fundings uh, have some requirements for owning European companies or something else? Uh, well, in terms of the roadmap, it's an open invitation to come over, of course. Um, that, that would be fantastic. Um, as joined with AIM, uh, so, so that's, that's cool. Um, in terms of programs, um, there are, from now, now, now and again, programs arranged bilaterally with other company, uh, countries. The European Commission quite often sets things up. My understanding is that tends to be with Asia at the moment. It may well be the American initiatives in the pipeline as well. Um, that's really interesting to you. I encourage you to, to lobby your organizations and we'll do the same from our side. Yeah. Okay, well with that, I'm going to close the first session on infrastructure and thank all the speakers again. Very well done. Thank you.